coming to you live here from Hogsara, the village in the former municipality of Dragsfjord in the archipelago of Hittis, Finland, situated on an island by the same name. We are here today, of course, with the sparkling tuna open, open cup number 13. I love that number, lucky number 13. And I'm, of course, your host, Yaku of the Zaku. With me today is El Constructor de Cercas Altas que es conocido por sus lentes. Light underscore VIP. How are you doing, Light? <laughs> what is up, Yaku? Yes, we are back with another weekly edition of Sparkling Tuna Cup. And this week, my oh my, the tournament is maybe bigger than it's ever been before. Usually, we have a round of 16s, but now we almost have a full round of 32. Jesus Christ. Three, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 26, yeah. I had to double check myself because I thought we had a full round of 24, but no, we actually have 26 players signed up and checked in and ready to play tonight. Yeah, let's go! Exclamation mark, be in the chat if you want to have a look at the bracket yourselves. And my oh my, it's a very impressive bracket. Going into things, mate, we got some big names from Korea, like Byun. We got some big names from North America, like Trigger. We got some big names from Latin America, like Tavo. We got some big names from Europe, like Goblin. And mate, we even got some people from Australia. It's crazy, and it's not <laughs> Oreo or Starduck! <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day. <laughs> Fun fact, I'm pretty sure you said that the last time we cast it Azure. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting deja vu, man. I'm getting heavy deja vu. Oh my god. But yeah, it's it's great. You know, we, we're seeing some players that we haven't seen in a long time. Oh yeah, especially in the second round that we're coming in here. Mm. A lot of players who, in the early days of Sparkling Tuna Cup, they played and they played decently well, but... Uh, Yes, it's and have taken a little bit of a hiatus, but we are starting off, of course, in round one, and we are going to be starting on 2000 Atmospheres, LE, where, of course, in the bottom left-hand corner map, starting all the way in the bottom left-hand corner, we have a blue Terran player coming down from the land of Brisbane. He is the Prince of Brisbane himself, going to be representing Team Opus V. We have Azure. And spawning in the top right hand corner of 2000 Atmospheres LE, we have the Peruvian Terran player himself representing Team Super. It is Tavo. Otherwise known as Tapo. <laughs> Otherwise known as Neo's twin brother. Uh <laughs> Oh god. Um, but yeah, I just realized as well that Yaku, it's been a long time since you've been able to like obviously because you've been busy recently, um, since you've casted like Latin American players as well, right? Like I can't remember the last time you casted like a Sacramento or a Choppa. <laughs> That's because I was banned. <laughs> true, true. That's because I was banned from the entire region. <laughs> he did keep calling it Sacramento <laughs> and Choppa. <laughs> that didn't help. <laughs> But I think they finally lifted it, and uh, Tavo, I know he is going to be the my spokesperson on that behalf, mm -hmm. potentially. But uh, yeah, it has definitely been a very long time since I was able to cast players from the Latin American region. I always love watching them, though, because mm -hmm. they are very wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fun fact about Tavo, especially for the people who don't tune in to our Latin American weekly casts, is that Tavo actually won his very first tournament um, maybe two weeks ago, two, two three weeks ago, um, which was pretty big. Like, up until then, he's kind of been an up-and-comer. You know, he's been slowly rising the ranks among the Latin American scene. Um, but yeah, he had like a miracle run where he took down, you know, Jim Jaime, Jim Rising. He took down the Zerg Lord in like a best of five, went all the way to the ace match. It was crazy. It was intense. Um, and he finally became a champion. It was really cool to see. The first of many to come, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's because he hasn't been showing up with them recently, but uh <laughs> yeah. shaking my head. But here he's up against a different beast, mate. He's up against an old veteran. Older. Yeah, an old veteran, not quite from the Latin American region, but uh, very similar if you ask me. Hmm. 
Ledger, of course, somebody who we've been casting a lot uh, in the past couple of years or so, who has taken a little bit of a hiatus from StarCraft, but very recently, and by very recently, I mean about the start of last month, has come back. He has been uh, trying to compete as best he can, and we'll see if that helps him out here. Yeah, exactly. I know he has been laddering and practicing quite a bit, especially because ANZ Champs is on the horizon. We were able to cast uh, Azure last week in the qualifiers for ANZ Champs, and hey, he made it to that Codes portion, that, that kind of uh, S tier uh, portion of that tournament. So he is one of the best in Australia. But how does he compare to one of the up and comers who has been playing? A lot longer, a lot more consistently, I think I should say. Um, not necessarily longer. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see, as the openers are differing here. Of course, both players are eventually taking their expansions, but Davo going for a much faster cyclone here. Yeah, Davo a lot more in the defensive here, whereas Azure, he wants to go full on the offense. Hmm. Which they have four, yep, four Reapers and three Hellions. That's a lot of firepower behind his hands. If you can line up the Marines, then that's going to be about the end of the defenses here for Davo. I'm really okay. Yes, two Cyclones, but they are in the middle of the map. Yeah, they're kind of going to miss this entirely. It looks like the Cyclones are in position to catch maybe a drop, but in comes the Hellions and those Reapers force all the boys off the line. Oh, even forces all the boys a little bit here. Yeah, not the most ideal. These use the KDA charges as well from Azure, but when it's all said and done. Davo makes it out without losing much of anything. One SCV, uh, if that. I think I might have been scouting SCV too. Wow. Yeah, very impressive there. Honestly, he was pretty, like, there was some great micro there, pulling back the weakened Cyclone earlier. Um, he didn't lose any of his main army units, so great defense, and now he's going for a counterattack as soon as his meta act finished. Yeah, I was very worried for him for a sec when he did decide to pull the boys there, but turned out to be the right call for him. Now Azure will scout this medevac, and okay, interesting choice here from Davo. As she lands the marines here, try to soften up the cyclone instead, or the hellion rather. Yeah, 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 and doing whatever he can. I mean, at the same time, Azure is ready in the main base for the drop. He has a raven, he has a cyclone of his own. So Davo can't really go in, but again, he was able to alleviate all that pressure. He's perfectly fine back at home. He is the one with the map control. Yeah, I'm looking at how patient Davo has been so far with this drop. He just really wants to prioritize getting that Raven out. Once again, not losing too much here. Unfortunately for Azure, that Cyclone did lock onto a Marine. Hmm. So he wasn't really able to punish the Medivac. Yeah, in the end, Azure, he's kind of just stuck here. But in being stuck here, he actually goes for a very fast third CC, all things considered. Um, meanwhile, Davo, he did scout it, I believe. Yes, he did with the drop. So recognizing that Azure is going for that third base, he decides to go for his own. But because he has the map control, he has the freedom to just throw it down on location. Yeah, that actually is something to underestimate here. Hmm. Being able to actually mine from that third base quicker than your opponent will add up a lot over time. The question I have is what the Stavo intend to do with that extra with those extra resources because we, as we can see here for sure <laughs> he's building a second factory ah, what have we done <laughs> I knew it was a bad idea to cost the TVT Azure is going full mech oh boy <laughs> This might be a bit of a longer game, but thankfully for us, Davo is going bio, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's not going to be full on mech v mech. Yeah, it's one and, of those... Yeah, go on. Yeah, I was just going to say, it, it does still, you know, as the nature of TVT, it does still often mean that we'll have a lot of uh, siege lines out in the map. Not too many frontal engagements, but yeah, it does mean that Davo has the has the agency to be a little bit more active on the map. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think the other thing that I wanted to add is that Davo has a lot of practice against mech as well. Like, that's, uh, it's kind you, of the... You did, <laughs> you did say he was Neil's twin brother. Yes, yes. One is good and one is evil. Pure evil. And... <laughs> <laughs> we all know who was the evil one. <laughs> of course, talking about Neo, uh, the cranky duckling who plays nothing but mech in TBT. Um, and they all, they honestly have practiced a lot over the years. They've play, played a lot together. And Davo, as a result, has a lot of experience playing against mech. So this isn't going to be his first rodeo. Um, and already he's moving out across the map with a pretty decent timing. Stim is going to finish up by the time this hits across the map. Can he find a way in, though? Because, again, we have a lot of tanks. We have a decent tank spread as well. 
Yeah, these two ravens can do quite a lot, True. but considering Azure was the first player to get Vikings, it's going to be a little bit difficult for him to sneak those ravens in. Oh, but then again, Azure, he's rallying all of his ra all of his Vikings to the corner of the oh. map, so yeah, there's still a little bit of window of opportunity here! Turrets go down as well as disables! Tanks not quite dealt with yet, but on the flip side, neither have the tanks of Tavo. Oh, exactly. Made the Vikings, even though Azure did have the higher Viking count, and we can see he does take control of these guys. He does land the Vikings on top of the tanks, and with this, it looks like he may even be enough almost to clean this up. Yeah. Oh. Tavo's gonna have a tough time pushing with those forces. Okay, so he just backs away. It's probably the right call there. I mean, having one Siege Chef tank can have potential to become a foothold later on, but not when it's that close to your opponent, right? The yeah. defender's advantage is going to be massive. Exactly. I mean, it goes to show, like, honestly, if Azure, if his army was in position, he would have held that beautifully, right? Like, the Vikings came in so late. By the time they did, he had already lost two or three tanks. Um, but despite that, because of that air superiority, Azure was still able to hold on. And honestly, this is pretty big because now he's fully saturated on three bases. Like, he's starting to get, he's starting to work on his mech upgrades as well. His production is getting underway. Like, that was a big, like, key moment there for Tavo, and it just barely wasn't enough. Just barely. Hasn't really been able to make a dent in the economy of Azure just yet, so the yep, the alternative to that, of course, is to just try to outgrow him as much as possible. So bio player always wants to be richer than a mech player. Oh yeah, exactly. So we Dark. see Davo, he's expanding a little bit more faster, you know, he's working his upgrades. Very on top of them, by the way. 1-1 one, is done, 2-2 two, two immediately started as soon as it was done as well. Uh, meanwhile, Azure. Pretty, pretty solid scan here confirms that ah, Davo is taking that fourth base. And now he needs to react in kind. Yeah, I, I love the preemptive missile turret as well. <laughs> like, yeah. there's nothing here, but Azure, he's getting, he, he wants to, like, have a, have a heads up for whether or not a drop comes over. And because of that, Davo has to take the long way around. Yeah, well, knowing how immobile Azure is playing this out, I mean, he's going straight up traditional Viking tank. No cyclones uh, on the horizon for him. He needs to be. He needs to take every precaution possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And with that, it looks like he's going to eventually take that fourth base. Fifth CC is on the way as well. Sixth CC even as well. Um, <laughs> he knows uh -oh. how to make it happen. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little worried for Davo here, being a little. Uh... I'm worried that he's being a little bit too inactive right now. Nothing wrong with trying to max out as quickly as possible uh, as a bio player, but he's sticking to a marine tank composition, which does not fare well at all against tanks, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and uh, like he also gave up on trying to get air superiority as well. Like he hasn't remade any of his Vikings, um, so he's just going pure marine tank. And there is an advantage to that as he tries to. Oh my god, he tries to split. No! Once again, Azure just being super, super careful. Ugh. You know, not too many Terran players would take the extra step to place missile targets in the natural base. Mm. But Azure does. Yeah. He prevents a boost through the initial line of defense. He is the Aussie Tortuga, mate. Let's go. <laughs> he is a wall right he now. Is. Even more missile targets being thrown down in the main base just in case a doom drop comes in. Like, he's reading this so well because there we go. We do have another drop on the way. Headed towards the south, though, not towards the north. As Talbot is pushing out. We do see a scan on the army, though. Yeah, and he sees, wait a minute, there's not too many tanks sieged up at the moment, so maybe I can take my chances, but the rest of the tanks do come in. They're in range of Tavo's tanks, though, Ooh. and they get completely eliminated just like that. Still a very healthy amount of uh, Marines left here as well for Tavo, just to prevent any uh, any Vikings from really landing. Mm, yeah, exactly. You know, the Distracted. At the same time, we do have that drop into the main base. Oh my god, actually takes out all those Hellions, so it's going to take even more, um, like, just even more forces for Azure to really clean this up, and every single SCV goes down. Wow. I thought this was looked a little bit reckless here for Tavo, but reckless is how you need to play it out right now, it seems. 
Oh god, exactly. So Davo was able to distract the army somehow. I don't really know the path of that those medics. I think he just like needled through the center actually. I'm um, yeah. straight into the main base. Um so very ballsy move, did pay for itself. And now Azure is in a really rough position. Um he does have a higher army supply, and that is scary to be fair when he finally pushes out, but a lot of that supply are in these Vikings, and there's nothing really for them to do. Yeah, Hellions are out right now. They do have blue flame. They were trying to do a little bit of counter harass here, but Davo, with that sense of tower, with these marauders, able to reposition himself very, very quickly. Mm. Exactly, and I love this switch from Azure. I think he could have done it a little bit sooner if he had recognized how far ahead he was in the Viking count, and that is get Liberators out. Finally, two Liberators being produced at a time. That is key here, and with that, he will finally be able to reclaim his base. But again, this could have been a little bit sooner. This could have made everything here a little bit easier. I'm going to be a little worried for Pathic there, and thankfully Davo <laughs> is. Yeah, I'm just looking at a base count right now, Light, and Davo is finally starting to outgrow Azure by a little bit, mm -hmm. at least when it comes to the, these gas geysers. Those mules are definitely helping Azure out a ton when it comes to the minerals, but then again, minerals, not that useful when you're playing mech. You need gas as much as possible. Yeah, I'm sure he's just going to expand it at some point. Like, he's got the CCs ready and waiting. <laughs> like, he's ready to go. There we go. We do see one of them lift up and head on over there to that fifth base location. Just as you're taking things a little bit slower. Meanwhile, a massive heli. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. As you're able to find a little bit of a blind spot here for Davo. Planetary Fortress does finish up, but not before the entire mineral line goes down. Oh, but it rotates in, comes the main army of Davo. He does hit that fresh base, and the uh, the army of Azure just isn't here. Where are the tanks? The tanks weren't in position. That they were not. The planetary fortress was, however, and I'm really liking this force choke point right now. All of the Marines have been taken out. These tanks are trying to do whatever they the can, lips. but now he's realized, yep, I have no way of dealing with these liberators. I'm going to have to back away. He loses, what, four, five tanks in that single engagement? Wow. <laughs> Despite Azure not having his tanks anywhere near the battle uh, to begin with, it's the Libs who reign supreme. Liberators are key here, and it looks like Davo has recognized that he is going into his own Lib range, um, and he is going into his own mass Viking. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was worried for a sec when I saw all those Marines go down, but yeah, that was supply that Davo needed to get rid of. He mm -hmm. needed to get rid of something. In, in order to get his Viking count back up. Yeah, and right now I'm a little bit scared because Azure, does, he hasn't seen this, he doesn't know. Looking at the Viking count, Babel has like double the Viking count right now. He has 14 to the eight of Azure, and now he's sieging on up, and now uh, it may be too late, but we do have a couple of Thors here to back up the uh, Azure's army. They need to get in. Yeah, th Thors are definitely the big equalizer here in TVT, but as you said, only if they're in range. Thors, what are you doing right now? <laughs> they're a little bit afraid of that planetary fortress, and I think that might just cost Azure this engagement. He takes out that base, which is very, very nice. But will he have enough momentum to keep pushing from uh, here with the counterattack? Siege, Buffy! Ay, ay, ay. All these tanks are going to be going down. The Thors are doing what they can, but Azure lost a lot of supply here. But as you said, he, he didn't just get a base. He got a lot of SCVs. Like, somehow, someway, despite losing his army, Azure is still ahead in that, in that supply. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a little bit surprising if... Uh, I'm gonna be honest. Now he did remake most of his army on oh. Hellion, so he's still lacking a little bit when it comes to the tanks. Only seven of them right now. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, he goes for a massive Hellion run, but at the same time, Davo he just he just pushes straight on in towards that third base. He will get a kill on that CC. But Azure is rebuilding his Vikings, not just Vikings, but also going into Mass Thor. Yeah, that's definitely the way to play it out from here. I think. He knows that Davos is not going to be overly committed to the tanks. Well, I say that as he produces two more in addition to the six that he's got right now. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's kind of this weird dynamic here where again, like now it's Davos who has like the air superiority, who has so many Vikings and so many libs. Arguably too many, we'll see. Um, we do see 11 Vikings and 8 Liberators here for Davos. We'll see if his tanks are going to be in position for the big fight because Azure does have a lot of Thors. But again, they're not that useful if, if there's a tank line and if they can't get close. Yeah, tank line, a bunch of marauders. 
There's a lot of ways to counter Thors if they're alone like that. Yeah. I'm looking at Davos' Liberator account light, and I gotta be honest, if you're getting this many Liberators, you might as well get a couple of Ravens out as well, right? Mm. Just to get some anti-armor, make that AoE damage that Liberators have a little bit more effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ra uh, Raven Switch would be great. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. Uh, we'll see who's going to be the first to pull the trigger, as at the moment, Davo has rotated over once again here towards the southern base, is in range of that planetary, and Azure's in a really awkward position. Some of his stores as well were being body blocked by those tanks. Yep, and speaking of those tanks, they are starting to siege up right now. It is tanks versus tanks, but the Thor is unfortunately stuck in the liberation zones. Ugh. The lip range of Tavo really helping him out here. He is finally starting to win the sky battle, but not before absolute carnage has happened to his army. He has lost so many Thors, so many tanks, and 19 more SCVs. Oh. On top of all of that, I don't see an easy way for Azure to recover all of these losses. Just look at the unit's loss tab. Yeah, that was a hefty trade there from Azure. Unfortunately, fighting those live zones did really hurt him. But something that's really interesting is that like, again, both of them have been hurting each other. Like they've been constantly hitting each other time and time again. SCV counts, again, still in favor of Azure somehow. <laughs> he just needs a little bit of time and he needs these bases. Like he just lost one. He has been able to replenish it, but he needs to get another base up and running. Um, and Davo, he's just relentless here, just rallying across the map. Yeah, Azure has been doing a really good job of remaking his SCVs, but Davo, on the other hand, has gotten to the point where he says, it's SCV production is overrated. I have a ton of orbital commands. I'm going to rely on mules to mine minerals, and I'm just going to have a higher army supply than you. A perpetually higher army, higher army supply than you for the rest of this game. Oh, boy. Yeah, we just see a couple of scans thrown down from Azure. He recognizes that he is behind in the base count. Gonna try and take another. Unfortunately, it's gonna be an orbital, not a planetary. These are bases designed for mules. They weren't really meant to go in and take more bases of their own. So, gonna be a bit, a bit of a weak point here, but we'll see if Azure can keep it up. Uh, forcing all these scans has also been a really good uh, economic victory for Davo. Yeah. You know, Bajur just hasn't really been able to establish any sort of map control. He is a little bit clueless as to what Davo is up to, so how do you make up for that scan? What do you spend when you scan? Mules. Yeah, I mean, he has to because the sensor tiles were taken out earlier. Like, he doesn't have any yep. up and running. He's having a hard time keeping up with where the army is going. That's why he's had to scan so often. Meanwhile, Davo, it looks like he's going to be able to siege up at this planetary location. Azur cannot afford to lose his base. Yeah, I was wondering if those uh, marines want to risk stimming forward to take out the Liberators, and Davo was thinking it as well a little bit, but decided it's not quite worth okay. it in the end. Ugh. This tank line is absolutely massive though, and in a little bit of a moment, a window of opportunity, Davo stims forward, takes out the Liberators before they can fully siege up, and now there's nothing to stop all of these tanks. Davo having an absolute field day, picking off SCV after SCV after SCV. These Vikings shouldn't even be able to land. Oh my but god. He but he will. There we go. He has to. He has to land his Vikings. It looks like Azure will be able to hold on to this base, just barely cleaning everything up. Again, not the best trade. He did lose all his Liberators a little bit needlessly. Unfortunately, he just didn't have enough tanks here to cover those Liberators from all of those Marines, from that entire bio force. Finally, the tanks are coming back over, but again, a little bit too late. Because of that, the trade was still very close. Um, but now, now Azure is on the counterattack. Yeah, this is counter damage that he has to deal right now. Hmm. Needs to equalize in some way. Oh, that's a lot of limbs. Oh my god! That's a lot of limbs. Six limbs just popped out at once. Jesus Christ. Can we call for freedom? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god, in comes that freedom, by the way. There are some Thors, but again, the Vikings were dealt with earlier because they were forced to land. Oh, Jesus. All of those liberators in one location. That's, yeah. uh,. Man, and this is also a really good location to siege up, making the absolute best use of dead air that is available to him. Not quite able to get the Venn diagram up of uh, Liberation Zones, in. not quite spreading around, but he's coming in with his bio anyway. He is going to be able to overpower these tanks and take out these Thors. He's baiting the Thors in Ugh. with the bio as well a little bit, and Davo slowly inching forward. I do want to point out, though, that Knight of Player has uh, gotten another base since 
um, since about 10 minutes ago or something like that. Yeah, okay, no, he finally landed that base. <laughs> he did finally land that base, but they haven't been able to take any of the Rich Vespine bases or the corner bases either. They've been really struggling, but Davo has finally maxed out and he just has so much going for him. He, he did sacrifice his tank count, by the way. Like, he has zero tanks here with this army, but, mate, he doesn't even need Let's each! Ah! <laughs> Apparently not. He doesn't have... Yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky to deal with this planetary fortress, but since there are no SCBs to repair, he is comfortable enough to just stim forward and take it out immediately. We're at 124 army supply versus 90. Uh, sure has a very healthy tank count, I'll give him that, but he does need to get them into position. The Force! The Force! No! The Force! He's just so exposed and Azure will just take him out immediately. Uh, once again, not really a whole lot for his liberators to worry about yeah. as they see on top of these tanks and uh, yeah, it is. This isn't the end. I don't know what will be the end. Exactly. Like, there were a lot of tanks, but again, they do not shoot up. The Liberators clean every single tank up on that ground. Meanwhile, they have a bit of a Helium Humbite, but there's just nothing really left for them to do. Dabo with Mass Viking Lib. <laughs> that's all you need, mate. That's all you need. Well, that's the pinnacle of late game Terran, isn't it? Yeah. Sky Terran. Starport units. The only, the only thing that he's missing, IMO, is Ravens. Ravens and then the optional. Yeah, BCs are like late game, you know. That's optional, like <laughs> yeah. GG is called and Davo proves exactly why he is the slayer of Neo. GG well played. He does take a lead in this series. Again, Neo, he he did kind of do well kind of prepping him for this. Um <laughs> Someone just messaged me. He said, another Neo, not like this. <laughs> well, <laughs> he didn't know, mate. He that... didn't know. <laughs> uh... Well, that that is what we call him, isn't it? Azure, he's the Scottish Neo. <laughs> there you go, mate. There you go. I mean, we have uh, we have kind of talked about similarities between the Latin American and the Oceanic region. That's part of it, right? You know, they have their kind of stylistic, iconic players. Azure, he's I... willing to mech. That's what's different about him, though. He can buy a tank if he wants to. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, uh, the very key difference between Neo and Azure is that Azure... I like how you put it. He can go mech. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't rely on mech. He's, yeah. He is a very versatile player. I feel like when it comes to the Latin American Terran players in particular, mm -hmm. you are you won't be lacking when it comes to variety of play style. Mm -hmm. Every different Terran player from Latin America has their own distinct style. Neo, as we mentioned, loves going mech. White Idra, one of the cheesiest Terran players in all of existence and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Go further and further, so on and so forth. Uh, but they do lack a little bit in diversity, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they lack their own Azure, unfortunately. You know, yeah. he is uh, he is ours. <laughs> Azure is, yeah, Azure is kind of the jack of all trades, which hasn't really been recreated in Latam. Well, arguably special, but yeah. special nowadays is more Korean than Latam. So He's, he also leans more heavily into the mech, I feel. But he, he does. <laughs> Regardless, mate, we are diving into game two. We are, and of course, we are going to be playing it on Beliningrad LE. We're in the bottom right hand corner of the map, starting all the way in the bottom right hand corner. We have our blue Terran player coming out from the land of Brisbane. He is going to be representing Team Opus V, as well as the Northern Highlands, something like that. Reminded of that meme. We have Azure. Hi. And spawning in the top left-hand corner of Berlin Grad LE, we have the Peruvian Terran player himself representing Team Super. Currently up 1-0 in this series, only needs uno mas, one more. It is Tavo. Or, as his it, friends call him, yeah. Tavo. <laughs> yeah, Tavo. I don't want to mention how especially impressive uh, Tavo Davos performances because what is it right now in Latin America like 5 a.m. in Peru? Yeah. Is he in Peru or Chile? He's in Peru. Peru. Peru yeah, yeah, yeah. In Peru it's like 5 a.m. <laughs> Where is that? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Davo. This is his second week in a row signing up and checking in and playing in Sparkling Tuna Cup. Um, it's always very impressive whenever there's a Latin American or a North American player who plays in this just because it's at an awful time. 
Um, shout out to Trigger as well. He's the other kind I of was notable one. Trigger, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I was so hyped when you won that last that one week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 great to see them. You know, the passion is real. All the degen is will depend is real depending on how you look at it. Uh, <laughs> oh god. Um, but funny yeah. enough, it's also the reason why we're not seeing Stardock today. True, true. Shaking my head, Stardock. Shaking my head. <laughs> um, but I, I think this is a real treat because I'm. This is the first time that these two players have ever faced off against each other, and I do think they're pretty comparable. Yeah. Um, I would love to see more Ladan versus Oceania. To be honest, we, we don't see enough. Yeah, we really don't. I'm just. Yeah, I'm. I'm just grateful that I'm able to cast a Latin American player, but I'm especially grateful that I do have another Latam versus ANZ uh, match to cast here. Yeah, like the last one was what, like Mia versus Cham, like the like our Showman series. Yeah. <laughs> a long time, yeah. Uh, oh my god! Nice little uh, bits of micro here from Davo, able to win the Reaper battle. Yeah, yeah, he's able to take down one Reaper over Zhir, so Zhir's that much more vulnerable as he only has one Reaper across the map. Davo even keeps his SCV alive. Sure, the CC may be, you know, not on location, but, you know, you can, you can just lift it. It's all good. He's swapping them? Yeah, he's swapping the SCVs. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he's playing against Neo one too many times. <laughs> oh, that's around! Yeah, unfortunately for Tavo here, that it was an instance of the KD-8 charge working against his favor, actually helping the SCVs surround the Reaper. Yeah, so kind of a tit for tat here. Tavo got a Reaper for free. Azure was able to get a Reaper for free as well, uh, <laughs> in a way. So, you know, they end up trading here a little bit. Um, of course, Azure is struggling a little bit more on that work account, surprisingly. But, you know, they're both getting their naturals up and running. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. It's all said and done. Davo got out of that a little bit better, but it's pretty negligible at this stage of the game. Both players are just building up their forces. Mm -hmm. Marine Tank is the name of the game for now. Yeah, yeah, for both of them. Meanwhile, ooh, Davo is going for a bit of a switch here, so it looks like he wants to go into some... Uh, the standard thing would be Ravens, I guess. Um, we have seen <laughs> Raven open is quite common. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I got excited because I wanted to see a Banshee. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, because of Ravens, Banshee mm. openers just aren't as common anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a powerful utility unit for the Terran player, the Raven, mm -hmm. especially in TBT when the backbone of the army is tanks, and you're yeah. able to disable the tanks immediately, you know? Yeah. Why not that advantage? I know Bjorn has been playing around a little bit with it. I, th I think he even did it against, last week against Keen, where Bjorn would go just one Raven, um, and he would and just... Then, uh, and, and and then go straight into Raven. Sorry, one Banshee, and then go straight into Raven. Um, mm -hmm. But just use it to just harass, and just, like, be a, di a distraction while he goes for, like, multi-prone with his main army. Um, with mixed success. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where doing that, if you can pull that off... If you can pull that off correctly, it is super effective just picking apart your opponent's attention, but it's hard to do it effectively, right? Yeah. Bjorn isn't even able to, you know, nail it every time. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So we'll see. Uh, so far, you know, everything is pretty standard between all these players. You know, our Raven count's getting up, our tank count as well. I guess uh, we're mainly keeping an eye on Azure to see, is he gonna do it again? Is he gonna go full mech? Like, mate, we didn't really get to talk about it, but last game was pretty goddamn close. <laughs> it really um, was. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, it really was. I think looking at that previous game, it felt like Davo was ahead throughout most of all of it, but... Every single time, you know, there was always one or two moments in each engagement or in each push out that, mm -hmm. you know, if one thing didn't go right for Tavo, Azure would have been able to overtake and uh, overtake and beat a player with momentum from that point. Yeah, like last game was so back and forth and so scrappy, especially when it came to the trades. The problem was that they were they kept like trading equally, and that's always a bad thing for the for the making player, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. the army is just that much more expensive, Azure had less bases, so over time he was whittled down. Meanwhile, Tavo was the one that was event eventually able to break and overwhelm Azure. And it looks like Azure has had enough of that because this is what we're talking about. Mate, I see Stim, and I see more Raxes. Oh, yeah. Good old 
marine tank versus marine tank is on the way. Mm. And this, yeah, should be should be something that I don't know. I'm feeling a bit more optimistic for sure here. As you were saying in the last game, they were trading evenly, but because Azure went to mech, uh, he ended up hurting a lot more because of it. Now it's a bit more even, you know? It's anyone's game. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, this may even be a little bit of a surprise here for Davo. Meanwhile, here we go. Davo's gonna try and force himself in. Does push into tank range, but the order towers are gonna be able to take down some of the tanks. Yeah, some of them, but not all of them. Now Davo being forced a little bit to, uh, land some of his Vikings, but as his tank siege up without too much difficulty, he's able to completely reset the tank count of Azure. He is winning so much ground here. He still has that air superiority, by the way, and he is using that to full effect, trying to whittle down this uh, third base. Yeah, exactly. They did end up trading out some of their Ravens, but in the end, Davo just had far too much here. He was able to pull that trigger, and like, even if he gets stopped here, like, even if Azure is able to hold here at his natural, the damage has already been done. Yeah, it was such a decisive engagement here for Davo. In, in no hesitation, immediately disabled the tank, threw down the auto turrets, and because of that, he's able to come out of it a little bit ahead. Yeah, I mean, man, mate, his base is already up and running. He's, it's fully saturated. He's getting his gases as well. And we're bio tank. We're not mech anymore for Azure. So it's not like he can turtle up and, you know, slowly get a, a more efficient army up and running. Like, this is much more of a mirror matchup. Yeah, Davo even striking a little bit of fear into Azure here. You can see he's being very cautious before he lands his third base once again. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. As eventually he will get it back up and running. At the same time, the army of Davo is rotating over here towards the north. It does get spotted by these Marines. Yeah, and unfortunately, Azure will have to reposition just like so. But he is able to reposition. The Raven goes down for Davo, but not before it lands when the anti-armor missiles. Oh, oh man. That's just about going to secure the air superiority for Davo here, but he doesn't, honestly, he doesn't have that much on the ground, so he can't quite push up into these tanks. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Davo is thinking about it. He's going to, oh my god, it looks like he's going to get in range of the gases. Ah! That's a little bit unfortunate here. But sure might not be going mech, but gas is still very important for him to get his upgrades here. Yeah, exactly. The gas geyser does go down. Looks like one of his tanks also got a couple of shells to the face. At least Azure is getting this third base back up and running, so at least there is that. But Davo is one step ahead. The fourth is on location. Yeah, even setting up for a bit of multi-prong here. Oh. This supply block is killing Azure right now. Davo lands his Vikings and do get taken out, but they buy a lot of time for these tanks to get a couple of shots off. Wow. These will finally be cleared out by these Vikings, but we do have a double drop coming into the main. Actually, they don't even get cleared up. <laughs> what? Wow! Yo, that, that was so quick to unseat just tanks, mate. It was insane. Just in time for the landed Vikings. Tavo only loses one, escapes with two, and at the same time, there is that double drop you were talking about. Yeah, it's really starting to mess with the economy here. And meanwhile, there are reinforcements in the front line too for Tavo. Davo is just absolutely picking Azure apart right now. Mate, he is all over the place. No, the third base was left completely undefended. Davo, he's steaming on four. GG gets called. And Davo takes the series 2-0. That was some masterful TVT we're getting out from our uh, purple... Terran player Davo. I got really worried for him in game number two because we th all thought that since Azure was going bio, it would be a lot closer, but apparently not. <laughs> that. <laughs> That game wasn't anywhere near as close as game number one. It wasn't. Like, game one was so dynamic. It was so back and forth, right? There were, there were moments where Azure was ahead and Davo was ahead. It was, it was it was a great, great showing of TBT. Here in game two, wow. Davo was able to really flex his multi-prong, right? And that is kind of what he's been known for. Again, if you're not tuning into sentiment, if our, our typical Latin American weeklies, we, we even had a winner's interview <laughs> with Davo. <Yeah. laughs> and we asked him about it. And he was like, yeah, you know, like, Chaos Fate took me under his wing you know he's like my senpai you know my sensei even like he's been teaching me like and he's really been like showing me so much about like what what it takes to be a, a pro terran player um and then he's kind of like surpassed him now you know he's kind of like Whoa. broken out and and he's becoming his own player and it goes to show here like he's he's goddamn good you know <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> he is rising. He is rising very much. I'm going to keep my eyes on Davo, mm -hmm. especially here, when it comes to the Latin American scene. I was going to say, if Davo gets a payout, gets a payout tonight, then he better buy a can of Inca Cola for uh, Chaos <laughs> Fate and Neo. <laughs> he really, mate. Chaos Fate doesn't want Inca Cola, mate. He wants to send Mesa, mate. Give him a Corona. Ah, mate. That's what he Mesa. wants. It's uh, bueno. Ay, ay, ay. Um, I was trying to make it PG, but... Uh. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But yes, congratulations. Davo does take the series 2-0, and he will move on to the round of 16, where he has a Protoss player waiting for him. Yeah, I would say probably the most intimidating opponent that Davo can face tonight. One, because it's a Protoss player, and you, know, you don't really encounter too many of those in Latin True. America, but also because it is he is up against straight up the top seed of all of Sparkling Tuna Cup. We are, of course, talking about the Polish Protoss player, Art. 